Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Honda Chris, here in the sales department at Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And here behind me, I have a brand new 2025 Honda Pilot Touring. So let's show you guys all those cool scanner features and functions right now. Let's get going. Alrighty, so here we are right outside the Honda Pilot Touring. Now, if you guys are getting a little bit of wind noise, I do apologize. I can't hide from it today. So please just hang in there and bear with me. I want to get a lot of good information. Now, as we're talking about good information, you guys are welcome to pause the video right about here if you want to explore the window sticker on your own. Now, you guys can see up top, it is a 2025 Honda Pilot. It's an all-wheel drive, and the trim level is the Touring trim. Now, over here on the right-hand corner, it talks about your fuel economy. So you got 25 for the highway, 19 for the city, and 21 for your combined rating. Down on the right-hand corner, we usually have safety ratings, but right now it says to be rated. So you'll see more information released as time goes on, or you can find more information online. Now, this is going to be a U.S.-made product, Lincoln, Alabama. The price point is a little higher as you see right now, just because this particular one that we're touching today, that we're doing the video on, has a function package. So you can see what includes on that function package and what's the price adjustment because of that. So that's how it's uh, been shipped to us with this package already on it, all right? So a little bonus. There we go. Now we're gonna see the standard features and functions on this particular vehicle for the Touring trim, which does not include usually this. Those are accessories that have been have added from an American Honda. All right, so this particular color is Obsidian Blue Pearl. I will also throw some additional color options up there. Then also there's going to be a plus charge for that particular color. So you guys be fully aware of that before arriving at your local Honda dealership. All right. Now as we step here towards the front of the vehicle, it comes with two key fobs. And on the back of your keys, there will be numbered one and two for your two seat memory and for your vehicle settings. Now we're going to have remote start with this vehicle. So you simply just double tap lock, hold this button down here for a few seconds. You're going to see your light's going to flash. It's flash. It received it. It starts right up. The lights flash again to let you know, hey, I'm on and running. The remote start is uh, runs in 10 minute intervals, so let's say 10 minutes have passed, it automatically turns right off. Now let's say if 8 minutes have passed, and I repeat the process, it runs for the grand total of 18 minutes, so you can do that twice, a third time, no, 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 it would not work a third time. You have to get in the vehicle and turn it back on. Now let's say I change my mind, I don't need to get out there, I can let the timer run off, or I can click and hold this button right here, and it will shut everything right off from there, and the doors will remain locked for you, okay? Now, all of your Honda sensing features are standard. I'm talking about your lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, your forward collision, and traffic jam. All kinds of safety features right here. It's pretty much its middle name. Now, we have a 3.5 V6 with an automatic transmission with 5,000 pounds of towing capacity for all-wheel drives. I'm going to throw horsepower and torque up there so you guys know what you're playing around with. So, with the touring trims, you're going to see they definitely dress them up. You got a little bit of chrome action coming right down over here. You're going to have LED fog lights right down below. Right above those, you're going to have your parking sensors. You're going to have front and rear parking sensors with low speed braking control. So as you're backing up in the parking lot, before you hit an object, it's going to stop you. So that's going to become nice with the low speed braking control. We see a nice black gloss finish on the grill. We got a little bit of chrome action right on here in the front. And then we're going to have your LED daytime running lights. And then we're going to have LED headlights. So we're going to have auto high beam. Wipers are right underneath the hood line. Gives that little nice sharp little finish. Then we're gonna do a little side step right over here. You can see those nice alloyed rims. And then we're gonna do a side profile look at the vehicle. As we're stepping back, I'm gonna throw some exterior measurements up there so you guys can see how it compares to you guys' current vehicle than other vehicles out there in the market. And most importantly, will it fit in the garage? Now you can see on the bottom half of the windows, you got a little bit of chrome action. The top half is going to be a nice little black finish. We have rear tinted windows. Then we got black roof rails up top, body colored handles. We have a body colored side mirror. Turning indicator. It's going to be a breakaway side mirror. So if you accidentally, oops, bump it, or if you need to fold it in, pops right out. You just pop that bad boy right back in place. Now for more safety features, we're going to have the blind spot information system. So that's going to be the little icon right here on the mirror. So as you're driving down the road at least 20 miles an hour faster and a car's over here in your blind spot, that light's gonna be a bright orange, all right? Now when you have your turning indicator on while someone's in your blind spot, the light's gonna flash, that little icon's gonna be a little light that's gonna flash a bright orange. 
and then it's gonna beep it to alert you, say, hey, somebody's in your blind spot. So it's not gonna beep every time someone's there, you just have to have your blinker on while someone's in your blind spot. Now we're gonna have smart entry with the vehicle. So let's say it's all locked up. You have the key fob with you in your pocket, purse, jacket, put your hand in the handle, and unlocks the door. You can choose, you want all doors to unlock or just the driver's side door. Now you can keep this in your pocket. You see these little ridges right up here? Put your thumb on that. It locks up the doors. So that's kind of nice. And I can walk away, I don't have to take the key fob out. So that's a pretty cool thing. Now you can also have the walkaway auto lock feature enabled. So let's say if it's on, I shut off the car, I got the key fob with me, I shut the door, I get 10 feet away, boom, it locks all the doors. I never have to second guess myself again, did I lock my car doors, did I not? Who knows? Now I know with confidence it's set that way each time. Now you're gonna notice you got the little ridges back here, so maybe if I'm getting the kiddos and stuff out, put my thumb right here, it locks it from there, so I have to go all the way around and then hit the button. Now you cannot accidentally lock your keys in the car. All right, let's say, oops, I left my, you know, gym bag in there and I have a habit of hitting the lock button and I shut the door, it registers the steps. Chris, you left the key in here. Chris, you shut the door, you hit lock beforehand. You're accidentally locking your keys in the car. Let me just unlock that for you. Now when the vehicle's unlocked, guess what? Boop, capless gas tank is unlocked too. Got a lot of wind picking up here. So no longer cheap cap to worry about fixing or replacing. It's a simple slide and go. You guys are doing pretty good. Now when the car's locked, guess what? That is locked too. Now we're gonna step here towards the back into more in the wind, so please bear with me once again. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. So down here below, you'll see we have chrome-tipped dual exhaust. And once again, we have those parking sensors with low-speed braking control. I have your body colors, so that gonna usually get stick out like a sore thumb. You got badge of honor right here. Everyone knows you're rocking out the touring trim. Pilot, right here in the nice black letters with the black finish. And then we have all-wheel drive badge of honor down there too. Now we got the hands-free um, power lift gate. So I don't know if it's on right now, but if it's on, if you have the key fob with you, back here and you do a little kick motion right underneath, it will open and close from there, okay? So let's give it a shot one more time. It looks like, oh, there we go, I got it. So you can open and close it with that setting from right here. Now, you can also open it, obviously, with a button. I can stop it, and you're also going to have a button right here below. Now, this button is going to act the same way as these buttons. So, I just want to throw that out. So, let's say we're all done here, and I drive my walkaway auto lock feature enabled because I don't like it. Hey, you know, everyone has their preference. This is the last area I'm getting my stuff out. I don't want to get the key fob out of my pocket. And the last door, I can hit this, and it locks all the doors, including the hatch from there. So that's kind of a nice little function or feature right there. Now I'm gonna throw some cargo measurements up there so you guys know what you're playing around with. So as life happens, you can say challenge accepted. You now have all the room you need for family activities or day-to-day -day life. So once again, this is part of the function package right here. So I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna remove that so you can see what it's gonna look like without it, which it does not usually come included with um, from here, okay? So I'll be right back. And we're back, all right? So we got the seats up right now so you can see what it looks like with the third row seat up for the cargo storage back here. Now back here, you're gonna have a 12 volt plug-in. Now down here below, let's see if we can do this one-handed. I didn't plan this that well. Unlock that bad boy. There we go. Pull that right out. You got the jack and funnel and stuff like you may need for those unforeseen events, okay? So your tools for your flat tire and stuff like that. That pops right back in in place. Lock it right in. Now you guys know where the jack's at. Your spare tire is going to be down below. Now to release this, you simply pull this up, you'll pop this open, and then you'll ratchet right down. So yeah, that's the spare tire. Now you can have this little doohickey bun. So when you click that, it turns green. So when I walk away with the key fob, guess what? It automatically closes. So if I have my hands full, I don't have to worry about hitting that button or anything from there. Now down here, you guys are probably wondering, why is this so deep? What's going on? This center seat right here in the second row is removable. So that can act like captain's chairs and then we can stick it right in here. 
And then, as we look down over here, you have a nice little strap to tie it down so you won't be jumping around or rattling or anything like that. This will be a nice tight fit. Then we have a nice little divider there off to the side. So, you know, if you got any cargo or any stuff back here, it won't be falling down underneath here and making a mess. Now, to fold these bad boys down, you just yank and push. Yank and push. Then, of course, those will come down too, nice and flat. So, now as we're checking out the third row seat, we have cup holders back here, a USB C plug in, then adjustable vent. The third seat belt could be right up here if you ever need it for a small butt. You guys can fit three people back there if they're small enough, a USB C, and then adjustable vent, and then cup holders. So, now we're also going to have cursey tie downs, one there and over there. So if you have anything back here, you want to be jumping around, damaging the plastics, you can definitely secure that. Now we're going to fold these back up. As you can see, you can, oh, let me just get a whole bunch of motion sickness going on. Have those set at different reclines from there. All right, so there we go. Struggled a little bit. Now we have a height adjustable lift gate. So let's say if you want to have it open to this particular setting every single time, you guys click and hold this bad boy, wait a couple seconds for the double beep. There it is. So now when you close it and then open it back up, it's going to be set to this setting every single time. So I need to fine tune that again for someone tall. There we go. At the bottom, and now it's going to close. Now, before we dive in right here, I'm gonna throw some enter measurements up there so you guys know how much room's in there for your friends, pet, cargo, whoever's brave enough to tag along. There you are gonna know they're gonna be comfortable. <coughs> Excuse me, it's like I inhaled a bug. All right, so back here, we're gonna have a little shade action. Keep that nice little bright sun out of the way. Nice little trim work finish. You have a leather armrest. You guys know about power windows, that kind of works out. Cup holder, little tray, cubby action down below between one and two. And then we'll come right over here. Now, once again, the pilot door seal is going to be part of the function package. Other than that, it's going to be a nice, just a blue finish. I just want to point that out, all right? So we have a leather interior, of course. To access the back, you simply hit this one-touch button right there. This seat spring loads forward so you can get back here. Nice leather interior back here, once again. They also have one back there. So they have to wait for someone else to let them out. They can let themselves out. Now these seats can slide forward and back. You have a squeeze bar. Now for those with car seats, guess what? It's all nice and exposed so you can accommodate for multiple car seats and you don't have to dig under and all that. I know the pain, been there, done that. Now you can have this little string thing right here, pull that. The center comes down, so if you don't want to take it out, you can have it as a nice little divider to prevent those kids from arguing. Well, hopefully, tray action, cup holders, and then there we go. Now, to bring this bad boy right back up, you just got to pull that, and then it's going to be a two-hand job. Fling that right back up. Now, if you want to use a third seat belt, it's going to be right up here for you guys. So, simply just grab this part right in there. Then your buckle, you know where the buckle goes. Courtesy pocket, courtesy pocket too. We're gonna have adjustable vents right up here. We're gonna have climate control and a couple of things down below is the USB C's. You got two of those bad boys. We'll open this up once we get up front. So a nice huge light will come right in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this center seat out and I'm gonna stow it so you guys can see what it looks like. So simply I'm gonna fold this bad boy down and I'm gonna pull this string right here and then I'm gonna lift this from the back. So I can't do this with one hand. So I'm gonna pause the video. We'll come right back to it. All right, so here we are now. We got that center seat removed so you guys see what it looks like now. Now we're gonna jump up front so we're open up the door. We're gonna take a look at the, here at the driver's side door. You guys will see you have a nice leather armrest. You know, guys know about power windows. You get your power locks, your mirror selector between the left and then the right, the D pad to adjust your mirrors, and then you got a little window lock button just in case you need misbehaved husbands or anyone in the back playing with windows. You can lock them out. Now we're gonna have two seat memory, cup holder, some additional cubby space down below, more cubby space down below. We'll come right over here. We're gonna have 
power seating. So it goes forward, it goes back, it goes up, it goes down. Do a little tilt action on the front half and lower that bad boy, recline the new lumbar support. All right. So we got pedals, of course, to get A to B. Your hood release is wrapped around. Pull this bad boy right out. And let's show you guys some of the common courtesy stuff under the hood. All right, so we're going to hide from the wind. There we go. So we already talked about horsepower and torque. Let's talk about the little things you may do on your own. For example, you got the fuse box right here. If you ever need to change the fuse, brake fluid right up there. Battery is down here below. So you may have to do a little adjustment to get to it. Not the best or the worst place to put it. And then we got the dipstick here. Nice bright orange. You'll find it between day and night. And then the oil cap right there. Your coolant cap is right down over here. And then... Washer fluid is a nice blue cap, easy to find. So if you ever need to fill that up again, you know where those items are at. Now, for those that have the capabilities of working on their own cars, that's awesome. If you have more of those advanced questions, contact your local Honda service center. I'm sure they'd be glad to assist you guys from that point. All right, let's jump back up front where all the fun begins. All right, so here we are right inside the vehicle now. Simply have the key fob with you guys. Could be in your pocket. It could be right over here in the tray. You guys get the point, just somewhere in the vehicle. From there, we're gonna step onto the brake pedal. As we're stepping on the brake pedal, you see the button's gonna light up for the push button start. Go ahead and push that in. Now you can take your foot off the brake because everything's fully on and running. Over here on the left-hand side, you got your power lift gate button. So it's a click and hold for a couple seconds. We'll open and close. Now this is gonna be your vehicle stability assist or your traction control. If you need to turn that off, it's a click and hold. As you can see right down there here on the driver's interface, it is off. Now when it's on, there won't be an icon up there. It's just only when it's off. Now you can have a steering wheel release right down here on the left-hand side. Pop that down. You can push it in. You can pull it back out, down, and up. You guys get the point. It's a four-way adjustment. Then lock it right back in place. Now we have a leather-wrapped steering wheel. There we are. Now all of your Honda Sensing features are going to be over here on the right-hand side. So you got your traffic jam assist and your lane keep assist. It's going to be this button right there. So when you select it, you get a little magic icon right up there to let you know it's available. So what's going to happen is your lane keep assist works between 45 to 90 miles an hour for your highway driving, while your traffic jam works between 25 to 45 miles an hour. So with those two features within the one button right there, so as you're driving down the road and you go out of your lane a little bit, it goes beep 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 you turn that beep on or off then it kind of brings you back and puts you back in the center of your lane that's what those two features will do now when it's actively working obviously you're here and feel it but it gives you a little visual confirmation right here too so beforehand you'll see this white icon is going to be green so once it finds lines on the road to be green you get a visual confirmation you look down you go out it does its job all right so you know it's actively working now next one's going to be your cruise control it's going to be this button or your adapted cruise. There's gonna be two different icons as you select that button. First one's gonna be your adapted cruise because you got a little speeder meter with a car with an arrow like it's locking in place from there. So when you select that button, or you can have the second option right here. That's gonna be the speeder meter with an arrow just for your standard cruise. Now, what I'm gonna be doing to switch between the two is just clicking and holding this button down for a few seconds. It switches back and forth. Now to set your cruise control or your adapted cruise, you got the toggle switch here. You can toggle down, it locks it in. So let's say if you're going 45 miles an hour, now we can set your distance right here by tapping this. It's not a hold, a little tap, tap, tap a ruse. As you see right there, more lines means further, less lines means closer. So what we're looking at right there. So once we're going the speed, a car in front, let's say we're going 45, the car in front is going 40, it will slow us down to maintain that distance. And once they get out of the way, we'll resume back to whatever cruise control speed was set at. So it keeps you at sync with the driver in front of you. That's the best way to describe it. Now, if this button is gone or, you know, you select it and the icon's not up there anymore, it means you can't use it. So I just want to stress on that. And when it's actively working, of course, it goes from white to green to give you a visual confirmation. Hey, I'm set. I'm actively working. Now that's going to be all of your safety features here on the right hand side. You got your paddle shifters to up and down shift from that point when you're in S mode. Um, let's talk about the wipers, adjustable and men, rear wipers, auto lights. There we go. We have off, on, fog lights. They're off. Now they're on. Then we'll come right over here. So you got your Volume, of course, for your toggle switch, you toggle up and down. All I'm seeing is glare, that's why I'm, there we go, I can see you. All right, 
So you get your volume, you get your radio stations and stuff you can switch between. You get your voice command, so if your phone is paired or you're using your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wireless, we'll probably say that again a couple more times, but you can do voice command stuff and they got a little home action. Now, this little wheel is to navigate through your driver's interface. We're gonna to get to that here in a second. Before we do that though, let's talk about the layout of the driver's interface. So you get your speeder meter, you get a digital speeder meter right there. We already talked about your safety features that are available. So now once those icons are gone, they're no longer available. You can see which drive mode you are in. There's a couple different options. We're gonna talk about that later on. Five miles on the vehicle, we're in park. It's 73 degrees out there and it's so beautiful today. And then, then this is the gas tank. Right now it's completely full. We're not looking at the little line, little dot, we're looking at the bars. So if it's half tank, guess what? Half of those bars are gone. That's how you're gonna know about your tank. Now, at the time is 2.30. You can see about your safety features, which ones are fully enabled. We're going to see that more within here in a moment. And then you have your tachometer all right there for you guys. Now we can see you in sport mode because it has that little sport right up there and with the red icon. Let's turn them back down to normal. There's your layout for you guys. Pretty nice and easy. So now we're going to back up. Once again, we're going to be using this wheel to scroll up and down for the driver's interface. Just select items I'm pushing in this wheel. And then to back up, I'm simply hitting the home button. So the first one we're going to select is fuel and range. So right now in a full tank of gas, based on five miles, we have a range of 395 miles to go before going empty. Once again, this is all going to be computer generated. It learns from your driving habits, your condition. So if you live in more hilly area versus flat, of course your fuel economy is going to be different and depending on how aggressive you guys are. So please keep that in mind. Yours may be better or worse. Um, so yeah, that's your range. I'll show you average fuel. Down here you can see that uh, we have an A. As I use this little wheel again to scroll down, you can go down to B. So there we are at B. I'm going to push that wheel in. If I'm going to reset my trip B, that's done. Just like that. Now we have a 0 to 50 bar. So as you're driving down the road, you're going to see that graph kind of, you know, fluctuate. It's going to show you a lifetime fuel economy as you're driving down the road. So it kind of gives you a nice little visual. For more visuals, you will have a fuel efficiency backlight. So as you're driving down the road, you get a green bar that will appear when you're being fuel efficient. Then when you're not, it's gone. No visual at all. At all. Whew, I'm struggling to use words, words today for some reason. All right, so we're gonna scroll down to speed and time. So you get a little track time if you want to. You can reset some cool stuff. Audio, if we had your music playing, you can go between your different sources right here. Phone, if I had my phone paired up, I can uh, check it if I have anyone for favorite context, save right up there. Navigation gives you a little nice little compass action, facing south at the moment. Driver's attention monitoring system. So the car knows the difference between you doing a bad job at driving or the, car, the wind blowing you around. So I'm assuming you probably want the car to do everything in its power to alert you when you're doing a bad job, you need to pull over and take a break. So you get this nice little thing here, it'll give you a little one bar graph. When you're doing the worst driving as possible, it's gonna alert you to let you know, pull over and take a break. All wheel drive torque, you can see where all that's going at as you need it in lifetime feed. Seatbelt, so you can see who is sitting where and not wearing a seatbelt. Here we are, guilty. So if I grab the front passenger seat right now, I'm gonna buckle up in three, two, one. It's pretty responsive. And then I'll buckle, and there we go. So you can see what a seatbelt looks like. Next one's gonna be maintenance. So if you have any like oil lights telling you, hey, to uh, get an oil change, tire rotation, stuff like that, it's all gonna be right there for maintenance. Tire pressure, you will have a direct tire pressure monitoring system. I have a video that's going to show you guys how to reset your tire pressure light or how actually to fill your tires up and how that automatically does it automatically for you. Now, safety support kind of goes with this little green light. That's how I know everything's enabled because right now, as we scroll down this, your road departure is on, your blind spot is on, your low speed braking is on, your parking sensors is on. And then you get your forward collision. So if I kind of unselect one of these, you see it goes from all green to partial gray, gray and green. And then if I enable everything or took everything off, it'd be fully gray out. So that's what that little icon down there means. So we're gonna keep everything on. 
or come down here to no content. So once again, if you need to change your speed distance from miles per hour to kilometers, you can, you just have to keep pushing this wheel. There you go, made the switch. You get a little visual right up there. I'm gonna turn it back. Brightness, just scroll up and down, pushing the wheel to set your brightness. Gauge display. So if I wanna clean up some of this clutter, you can, right now I have everything enabled, so everything's white, so are the options that we can remove, so they would not show up here. All this talking makes me thirsty. I think we talked about warnings. No, we haven't yet, so this is the last one. So let's say if you have the door left open, right? It's gonna be underneath warnings, or the hood, or if someone doesn't have their seatbelt. You know, you guys get the point for warnings. There's that. Now from there, we're gonna simply back up here quick. We're gonna take a moment, look at the dash, and see where all the events and stuff are gonna be at. So that one way over there is gonna be your guys's. We're gonna argue about these right over here. And then we got mine right there. Now the ones on the end, this is close, and then that is open. Now over here, you can have a nice little tray action for the front passenger so they can keep their phone and stuff up there. Hazard lights if you ever need them. A little horn action if I haven't honked it yet. There we go. Now let's touch base about the touch screen. So we're gonna have some buttons. You get your home button right there. So if you have anything selected, just hit home. Takes you back to the home page. You get the back button. So if you're kind of in within a couple things, you can hit the back to back out. As you guys already know, push in for your audio volume control. And it's gonna be this right here. So we don't have anything selected at the moment. And then you can switch between your radio stations. So all apps, we're gonna double check, make sure everything's enabled for you guys can see everything. So maybe as time goes on, you guys decide, you know what? I don't have an AT&T mobile plan, a hotspot. So I don't need the Wi-Fi hotspot. Again, uncheck it and it won't show up on the touch screen. You have a time right up there. There you go, I can see a little better now. So we got navigation, it's gonna be a Garmin Navi. You guys may have to play around with that as time goes on. You can pair up multiple phones, but only one would be a priority. That only priority phone will receive the incoming calls and make the outgoing calls, while the non-priority phone will not. Radio options. To find a radio station you like, you simply hit tune, and you just type in one of these bad boys. There we go, hit enter, and then you simply click and hold, and it saves it from there. You go up to 12 different stations. You can hit source right up there. Now you got some options. You got FM, AM, Sirius XM. You get three months of Sirius XM for free. After that, you have to contact them to continue that paid subscription. The USB, you notice you don't have a CD player. A lot of cars are going away from CD players. But hey, download your stuff onto your flash drive. Plug and play. It saves this stuff from sagging or having all that clutter from there. I know it's one little extra step, but you guys will thank us later on once you make that habit, okay? So we're going to have your Bluetooth capabilities, and then your smartphone connection is going to be your wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Pretty much will take like your Apple Maps, Google Maps, and other compatible apps and displays it on you guys' touch screen that will go throughout the vehicle. You got Bluetooth, we already talked about that, Apple CarPlay and Android Autos for your smartphone connection, Sirius XM, we already talked about that, your trip monitor. So you can see right now for trip A, what is our current one right now? It's going to be right here. Now, if we reset it like we did with trip B a moment ago, you guys remember how we reset it? So our current one's zero. But when we reset it, it shows you your previous up to three different times when you reset it. Second page, general settings. Vehicle settings. I have the video authors going to show you guys how to customize your vehicle settings for each driver. You have driver one and driver two. So check out my video. It's going to show you how to make that switch. We're back to USB and AM radio. You got your software updates, Wi Fi. If you have an ATT mobile plan, you can get that going from there. Clock. I have a video that's going to show you guys how to change your wall face or your face for the clock. If you have a nice of one of your own photos right up here at all times if you want it. I want to put a photo up there of the kids. 
Honda Link. You get a Honda Link's complimentaries, and then you also get a subscription app if you want to. So check out HondaLink.com and show you guys what trim level is compatible with what um, package uh, from there. Definitely check it out. Ask your salesperson about it. You're going to have smart shortcuts. The car is kind of learn from your habits of what you kind of you know play around with the most. Make some recommendations. Display mode. If this screen bugs you for your day or nighttime level, you can adjust the brightness on this or you can completely turn it off. And then you don't have to worry about all that bright lights if it kind of bugs you. Simply hit back home. We'll pop back over here. We're going to have the cabin talk feature. So this is going to be great because I can see what's going to happen with my kids. They love not listening to me. So if I turn this bad boy up, I don't know if you guys hear the echo feedback a little bit. I can look, stare them down like Cameron. Don't make me turn this car around, mister. You know, so they can't use the excuse. They never heard, you know, heard me say anything. I can see that on long trips. I'm like, oh, I didn't know the last bathroom was 400 miles ago. Oh, no. Now, a cool thing about the touchscreen now is we're here. Um, you can reorganize some of the stuff if you want to. So it's a simple just kind of drag, move the navigation down over there. Maybe I don't use my FM radio as much. Maybe I'm a more of a Sirius XM. I can bring it down here to the shortcuts. You can save up um, over all of these right down here below. So that way I don't have to kind of navigate through all this stuff. I just can click what I want from there. Now we're going to back up here quick. We're going to talk about where the vents and stuff at. Let's talk about the climate control. So climate control area, we got heated seats. High, medium, low, and off. Guess what? Same thing over here for the passenger. Now, we're going to have a tri-climate. So if I have everything sync, you can see everything sync as in everything's all together at once because the green light is on. If I unsynced it, maybe, you know, my wife likes to have it around 70s. Me, I like to have everything cold as possible. Um, so there, everyone's going to be accommodated. Or I have the auto button right here. So the car's going to do everything in its power automatically to maintain that temperature that it's set to. So you get different modes. As I'm selecting this, you'll see it right over there. AC on and off, off and on. Front defroster, rear defroster with heated side mirrors, air circulation, or back over here. We'll come down here to rear settings off, so that shuts off the climate back there. I can go down here and just accommodate. Maybe the kids are complaining because, you know, they're cold and I'm warm. Keep them caught, you know set up and then if you guys are like me have multiple kids and they love to find anything to argue about we can lock that bad boy so they can't be back here and playing around with the climate controllers and arguing about it mom and dad have all their power or maybe you got a misbehaved friend i got one then we'll come down over here you got a little tray action down below usb then a usb c 12 volt plug in tray action wireless phone charger guys these are nice to maintain your battery you do not fully charge it so this long journey drive so at least will help to prevent your battery uh to deplete as fast okay so keep that in mind they're only like a 15 watt uh fast chart you know 15 watt system now we're gonna have cup holders we have a shifter is all going to be a push button so let's say a foot's not on the brake check someone's smacking these buns guess what it's not going to shift you have to have your foot down on the brake and then you hit the button now you can see from there it's red for park green for reverse look reverse comes up there as you're in reverse your multi-angle camera automatically displays so you have a nice 180 view catches a little more of your blind spot i love this when you're in the parking lot to pull out because you know kids they don't look both ways and sometimes people don't pay attention Okay, now we have our directly right behind you view. As you can see, that nice Accord driving by. It's right behind us. Then a straight down shot from your rear bumper. So as you're backing up parallel parking, wherever the case is, maybe you guys put a hitch on this later on. And then you want to see how close you're getting. You're set from there. Now, this one's going to be on and off for your cross traffic monitoring system. I have the video that's going to show you guys that in action. So feel free to check it out if you want to see it. But simply, when the car is in reverse and the car is coming from the side, it will point out with arrow what direction the cars come from then it's going to give you an audible sound to look to alert you that's going to be for your parking sensors let's see if i can reduce that so you guys can see where your parking sensors are you got two in the front so there's going to be kitty cat corners they're going to have right down here below and it's going to be a right behind your view so now we have a neutral goes from red to green then you have a 
or I said it backwards, green to red. And then we have drive, it's gonna be D. Then we have an S mode. S mode's gonna turn off your idle stop. That's what this icon means, your idle stop is off. And then it's gonna shorten your gear ratio and with the engine brake regeneration. So that's pretty much what you're going up and down to the pills, stuff like that. Alrighty, so we have different drive modes. Let's talk about these bad boys. So there's gonna be a toggle switch right here. We're gonna to toggle all the way up. We're gonna start from the top and work our way down. So you can see right now we're in sport mode. Sport, shortens your gear ratio, fun, throttle, responsive driving. Come down to normal, your everyday driving habits. Econ's gonna be most effective for your highway driving, so this is more of your cruise. So what's gonna be doing is gonna increase your fuel economy by sacrificing AC power, acceleration power, and electrical power up front, all right? So those really hot summer days, you have to choose. Do you wanna be fuel efficient or do you wanna be comfortable? I know what I'm gonna pick. I hate the hot weather. I hate sweating to death. I'm gonna go down to this way. So snow mode, you're telling the car, heads up, we're going on the snow. So it's gonna do, it's gonna change how the car is going to perform to optimize your handling in the snow environment. We have a trailer mode, turns off your vehicle stability assist. Sand mode does the same thing, kind of changes the RPMs. It will do everything that's powered to prevent the sand bearing your tires. We have a tow mode, it just preps the car, get ready to be heads up. We're going to be doing some good amount of towing today. We have electrical parking brake. As you pull this bad boy up, you can see it's engaged by the red light. It says brake down there. Now to release that, you simply have to apply onto the brake pedal. Because if you don't, you push this in, what's it gonna tell you? Apply onto the brake pedal and then push that button right in. Idle stop, we already talked about it briefly. For those that don't know what idle stop is, is when you get to a complete stop through the drive-thru, waiting to pick up the kids, stop sign, you guys get the point. You're staying put for a moment, All right? Boom, foot on the brake. Stop for the moment. It shuts off the engine while your foot's on the brake. Long enough the car meets its requirements, like engines to temp, to cabins to temp, stuff like that. Now, if you were, it would just whoosh, shut off. Now, when I take my foot off the brake, it starts right back up before I apply into the gas. Whole point of that is to be more about fuel emission awareness. It's not about saving gas. Uh, is fuel emission awareness, okay? I, my wife, she hates it. Hey, I get it, that's fine for me. It doesn't bug me too much. But what she does, she hits this button right here. And once again, you'll see it's off. The A down there below, it's off. Now you have to do it every single time you get into the car because you're hoping you forget about it and be more about fuel emission awareness, all right? As being forced on car companies. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Now we have your hill descent controls, this little doohickey here. So when you click and hold that bad boy down, you can see that icon down here below. It's on, it will lock you in between two to 12 miles an hour is the goal. We have a hold brake. I have the videos gonna show you guys that in action. Armrest. Here we are. Plenty of space down below to hide all of your snacks and Funyuns. Well, maybe just for me. We're gonna have an auto dimming rear view mirror with garage door openers right here. Lights. I keep it in the center. I open up a door, those will turn on. Then you got this doohickey. One tap opens up the whole shebang. And then this other button is for the power moonroof, so now I can wave at everyone. Be friendly. Let some nice air in. Place for the sunglasses, little conversation mirror so I can keep on my kiddos, telling them, you know, maybe Zoe to knock it off. Stop picking on your brother. A little light in there with a little mirror action and the visor. These slide and adjust as you see fit. We're gonna have rear seat reminder with the vehicle. So if we open up one of these back doors, I turn out the car, it's gonna say, hey, double check your rear seat. It's also gonna find the speed limit sign. It's gonna throw it right up there for you guys too as well. So yeah, that's pretty much is gonna be the Atorian trim here for 2025. If you guys found these videos helpful, please do me a huge favor, hit that like, consider subscribing, so I know to keep this stuff going on, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.